You're listening to the Traffic and Conversion Show. I'm your host, Michelle Fernandez, and joining me today is Julia Ciardi. Julia is a former Fortune 500 Marketing Vice President and made the quantum leap to freedom after two decades in corporate. She's on a mission to help thousands of women become their best self, fulfilled with purpose and passion. And to do this, we must ignite your mind, right? So today is all about becoming her. So stay tuned. Hey there, it's Michelle. Welcome back to the show. Joining me today is Julia Ciardi. Welcome, Julie. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I think we're going to have a fun conversation Oh my gosh, yes. I can already tell that this is going to be good. We picked up on our vibes before I pressed record. Okay, so let's, um, before we dive in, tell us a little bit about you, who you serve, all your your journey, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I love sharing it because I do think it helps people see kind of what's possible. But I, I spent 20 years in corporate. I was actually a vice president of marketing at IBM. Um, and I wasn't happy. I was doing the check the box of, you know, being that kind of type A ambitious Mm -hmm. woman where, you know, got the job, did all the right things, and then was on that career path of growth. Okay. Become manager and then become an executive and all the things. And I never loved what I was doing, but I loved the um, accomplishment. I loved getting Mm. to that next level. I loved actually creating a lot of income every time I was moving up in the company. But during my, my time there, I had my three kids And I got to that point that I think a lot of people get to, which was like, what just happened? I was 39. I was just having my my third child at 39. And I was like, wait, this is, this is not what I was meant to do. Like I I wasn't meant to stay here. I was meant to do something more. And as most people, I don't know, I didn't know what it was. I wasn't really sure. And this whole online world I didn't know existed. Like when you're in 20 years at corporate, you don't even know that this exists. And I was like, not, I kind of started to listen to some podcasts back then. And that started to show me what was possible, but I still didn't believe in this like online thing. So Mm -hmm. I did crazy thing. And I actually opened a brick and mortar store. I opened a boutique in our area because I just wanted to follow my passion. And I I ended up leaving corporate. I, I opened and started this boutique very quickly, got it to a six figure um, revenue, like four months after I opened it, wow. about, four, about four months after I opened it, I was also like, huh? Yeah. I don't think this is it either. <laughs> um, and the breadcrumb that kind of landed from it was that People came out of the woodwork. Women came out of everywhere. Like women that I've known forever as well to Mm -hmm. say, how did you do it? How did you do it? And Mm. I thought they meant, how did I start the boutique? No, they wanted to know how I left corporate. Mm. And what became really, really clear to me, something that I enjoyed in my 20 years in corporate was mentoring women. I loved mentoring women. I loved helping them step into making career decisions and also balancing family and all of that. That I realized my calling was to help women, especially those that are not totally loving what they're doing and wanting to maybe step into something different than they ever thought that they were going to do. And so I, you know, I became a certified coach, many different types of certifications along <laughs> the way to help women be able to make those steps. So really, at, you know, the way to kind of sum it up, what my company does, myself and my my team, is that we literally help women discover then create, and then grow their business or career of their dreams. We have found that some women, they don't want to go in the entrepreneur route. They don't want to necessarily start the business, but helping them figure out how how can they actually shift in their career, Mm -hmm. still work for someone else and love what they're doing too. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's an option in addition, you know, it's not just entrepreneurship, but we love helping uh, women in entrepreneurship as well. So it's a blast. I literally love what I get to do. Um, It was super hard to, to build and start like massively hard. Um, you know, the first year I can remember I had left the corporate uh, job. I had sold, sold the boutique, I actually sold my first business, which was kind of cool. Um, mm-hmm. have this, you know, coaching company that I'm starting. It's just me at the time and like making no money. And my husband, me, I was the primary breadwinner. He was a, a police officer. We've since retired hired him, but he was like, I think you're going to have to go back to work. Do you think IBM is going to be willing to take you back? And I'm like, oh no. Like I believed in myself so much and it's probably something that we'll, we'll talk about. I, I believed I was a six figure CEO 
even mm-hmm. when not, no money was coming in yet. Mm-hmm. And I, I really had to step into like staying the course on being that version of myself, even though I had no evidence yet that that's, but I just knew, no, this was going to happen. Like mm-hmm. I was not going to go back to corporate. This was going to, this was going to happen. And that build that first part, that's why I think I have like, my heart is so with women that are just starting or are in or are getting stuck because it is, I think it's one of the hardest things to yeah. ever do. And I mean, I have three kids and I still think <laughs> that the business is the <laughs> hardest thing that I've ever started and grown and just sticking with it. And, you know, continuing to become that next level me is what's created the seven figure business now. So it's just, I pinch myself now that this is what I get to do. Um, but it was really hard to start, but it was worth every tear, every, um, every, you know, uh, cry, hard cry. It was worth it all. And guess what? Here, there's just a different level of things, you know, that you're, you know, you're deciding and, you know, growing and all of those things. And it's, that's still hard and scary, um, but it gets easier, I think, because you get more evidence. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh. We have so much in common. So I was the same way. I had a 30 year career. It wasn't in corporate. It was a mom daughter, which made it worse for me to actually leave my mom. But I was at that place where it was kind of like, I knew I didn't want to do this anymore, but I didn't know what to do because this is all I knew, right? And again, being in our, well, I'm older than you, but the generation, it's kind of like the on, online world, what? Like, especially, you know, I, and it's grown pretty quickly, the online world. So like seven years ago, it was like kind of just still in its baby phase or like, it was just like a few people were in there. So it was really like kind of figuring it all out. And then as I started to go through it, I even remember like, I'm always the oldest. Well, I shouldn't say now there's a lot more people coming in, but I was always the oldest one in the room. And then I remember sitting there saying, oh my gosh, if I was only 20 something or 30 something, because everybody was like in that age range. And in my mind, I'm like, they have like all this opportunity for them. And here I am the older one. And like, I got to rush to get it all in. Did you ever feel that way? Like, Totally. And also I felt like where I felt a little mismatched is coming from that corporate environment, that whole like influencer Instagram world. I was just Mm -hmm. like, like, it just, there was a lot that didn't vibe with me either. Just, you know, and it's funny because I really believe that we know, right. Your, your vibe and your energy attracts those, right. That, and Mm -hmm. so my community, they're not those kinds of people either. They're like doing it messy and, you know, doesn't look great when they're starting and, you know, they're, 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 it's, it's, I love that part. Right. So I Mm -hmm. feel like totally felt like I was a fish out of water in a lot of ways. I'll never forget. I went to my first mastermind and it didn't feel like the age was the thing that separated me. Although if I look back, I was definitely one of the older people as well, but that wasn't the thing that stood out. I felt like they, that they, those women grew up a little bit more in social media than I did. Oh yeah. Because I was working in corporate for 20 years. I didn't really like, I was on Facebook, you know, and you know, for like to share stuff with family, I, that whole world to me and just how to put myself out there in this more personal brand. Like I look at my daughter and my son who are, you know, 17 and 19 and I'm like, man, they're so good Mm -hmm. at like just being their authentic self and how they, you know, how they, like they engage on social media. That wasn't part of my DNA as much as I was seeing with these other women. So I actually felt like, like I didn't quite belong. I, I felt a little bit like an imposter and all these things and I'll never forget. And it was pretty awesome. The woman that was running the the mastermind, she was, I think 12 years, my junior, right. Mm -hmm. And she's running this mastermind and she, she's the one that actually kicked me in the butt though. And was like, um, I'm sorry, let me get this straight. She's like, cause it was her perspective of me Mm -hmm. that I needed to hear. And she was like, you said you were a vice president of marketing, right at IBM. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you said you spoke on stages for LinkedIn. I'm like, yeah. You said, she's basically said all these things back to me. That was my past. I had cut that off. Like it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. And that it didn't, it didn't matter in this online space. And I, that was the, one of the biggest gifts someone could give me because I do the same thing now with the women that I serve, because these were successful women in their own right, in different ways, like mm-hmm. pedi- or with pediatricians, lawyers, you know, doctors, nurses who are totally successful, but because they aren't successful yet in starting their own business or doing a career pivot, they totally don't see the value that they bring. They don't see themselves as successful. 
well, that's where I had been. And mm-hmm. so it's just so awesome. Like I, I like how we go through things so that we can then help others. But that was the big thing for me. I was like, oh, this is, I'm out of my league here. This isn't, you know, I, I don't right. know if this is right for me. So it's so fascinating. It is. It is. And even if it's like adjusting your brain, like, cause in corporate or I was in mortgages. So like the banking world, it's like, we could only speak a certain way. Like it was very proper and very this where on social, it's more you and how you really talk yes. in real life. Now it doesn't have to be professional. And the, so it was like a lot of adjusting, like your beliefs or what you were trained to do. And it's like, Oh, can I, can I really run a business? Like saying, dude, like, I don't know. Really? <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Like, or even like we've been on my community and I've been on this idea of perfectionism and the fact that, you know, perfectionism is a trait that is highly valued when you work for someone else. Mm. So when you're in corporate or you're in real estate or you're a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, those that are the most perfect, like perfectionistic, like they're going to rise to the top because every I has to be dotted. Every T needs to be crossed, you know, all, and you're trying to impress the people above you and all that. That is one of the worst things you can do in entrepreneurial land. Yes. You have to like ditch that at the door, but that's Mm -hmm. a, that is a big mindset shift that like, that messy is better than not done at all. But like that goes against the grain of everything that you thought and and the expectations that you put on yourself and that others that pay you put on Mm -hmm. you. So that's been like a big hurdle for, I know it was a hurdle for me. I'm not sure it was a hurdle for you, but it's definitely a hurdle for my, my women because they're like, yes. This yes. Is kind of messy. I'm like, yes, do it. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect yet. Like you're mm-hmm. going to perfect it over time, but that comes from like how we were raised as employees. Oh my God. You're totally right. And I realized even on my journey, like to have this thriving, profitable business, it's, I always study. And we talked a little bit about this. Like I always would notice even from the beginning before I kind of knew like with your self-improvement and becoming who you need to be and all this good stuff. It's like, we would all be learning the same curriculum and yet there would be certain people who are just like, boom, they would thrive and they were like ultra successful. And then there's others that would be like, womp, womp. They were, you know, didn't show up or they would try and then they just wouldn't do that. And it really comes down to being a totally different person or like you were saying, like I believed in myself so much. Right. So, it, and it's, and it's a difference between, it's not like your morals and values, Right. It's like letting go of those thoughts, those beliefs that don't serve you, right? Totally. So- I, you are so like I always say it's the it's not the doing because mm-hmm. if it was the doing, everyone like my favorite place to point this out is network marketing. Mm-hmm. Like if if it really was replicatable and it was just the doing, everyone would be successful, right? But it's like ten percent are if the, if that right why. It's the being doing the doing. It's not the doing itself. So you can apply that to entrepreneurship. You can apply that in any company. I think of IBM. I mean, only a few or tiny percentage of people rose up into executive and senior executive positions. Why? Mm -hmm. What needed to be done was the same. Mm -hmm. You can teach someone the the same sales strategy, marketing strategy, leadership trainings, all the doing. It's the being. Mm -hmm. That is everything. Hmm. Hmm. So can you talk a little bit about like how to create this new identity for yourself and even um and I know I struggle with this at times is really having like that no self-doubt like that 100% like unshakable belief in yourself like maybe some tools to go back to that (laughs) honestly I think that I I I wouldn't recommend that that's where you like you're trying to get to that unshakable belief because here's where the belief becomes unshakable the more evidence you start to build right mm-hmm. like it's like you do need some evidence I think that it's having it's not about the not having self doubt or the non belief it's about having that much belief in your dream so mm. I had a ton of doubt in myself but I didn't have doubt in my dream of what I was trying to create so what we do what our because that's where that's we see that big gap for women it's like they that because of the doubt in themselves they stop mm-hmm. and they think that they have to have the belief in themselves have the belief in your dream mm-hmm. start with start there can you believe big enough in your dream that you're willing and committed to the dream Mm-hmm. Like, even if you have a ton of self-doubt about yourself, right? So that's the first step is like, you got to have a worthy goal. 
And it can't just be a regular goal. We call it the now goal. It's that someday goal that you're working on now. It's like that big juicy thing. So for me, you know, back in the day, the now goal was left corporate, right? I left my corporate career and have my own business. That seemed so impossible. I didn't know how I was going to do it, Mm -hmm. but my belief and my desire for that made me be able to step up and grow who I needed to become to make it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So we always, I I like to start with what, what are we, what are we creating? What are, what is that next big goal? Right. And so if, if some of your listeners are like, I I want my multiple six figure business to go to the seven figure mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Get really specific about what that, not just like the number on a piece, like we always put it on, um, like three by five cards, like, mm-hmm. and people keep them with them at all times. Like there's no mistake. Like I know in my community, what everyone's now goal is. Mm. There's no confusion. Like we know what the goal is. So now you can coach yourself. You can coach who you're being, how you're showing up against that goal. And so it's so important that it's like this big goal that you don't know how to do. If you know how to do it, it just goes on your to-do list. So that's not a goal that's worthy, right? Like if it's right. like, right. Like if it's sign the next client, nope, that goes on your to-do list, right? Or that's just a milestone that you're working towards. But you have this big, hairy, crazy goal that's like, oh my God, how is this possible? So let's say you're at you know 300,000 and you want to go to a million. Having that on your card that I am so happy and grateful now that my business has made a million dollars in a year. Mm-hmm. And then that becomes the lens through which you have to see yourself. How are you showing up? And what I like to do is I like, I say that the the, the, the big now goal creates your to-be list Mm. in addition to the to-do list. But again, what did we say? It's the being, doing, the doing, right? It's not the doing itself. So everyone wants to go to, okay, how do I get my six, my my $300,000 business to seven figures? And the first thing they do is, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? If you instead look at your goal, okay, 300,000 to a million, who do I need to be? And you start to brainstorm. You say, okay, if I'm already making seven figures, how am I, like, how do I feel? Mm-hmm. What am I thinking? What do I believe? What is a day like? What is a week like? How, what's different about my business then how, in, how, in terms of how I show up and work on my business, who I'm being, not what you're doing, but who you're being. Mm-hmm. Here's what's fascinating. You can look at that. And with no shaming yourself or no beating yourself up, you have to look and say, where is the gap? in terms of who I need to be and where I'm, I'm being. Normally, what I end up finding with people is decision-making, mm-hmm. discipline, consistency, um, you know, being curious, not defeated, like these different things, like stepping into that, especially decision-making. Because when you start to become a, the seven-figure decision-maker, that's huge, right? Like, and or consistency or, or, or all of those things. So I like to see you make a to-be list and you, you can start to see where you've got your gap. So for me, what I could see as my gaps back when I was trying to, you know, just make my first hundred thousand, you know, when I was trying to just make my first six figures, the big gap that I could see in myself was calendar integrity. So mm. I would, I would plan a lot of things or I would like come up with a lot of ideas or have all these thoughts, but I, I wasn't taking action towards them the way that I needed to, if I was going to make a hundred thousand dollars. And okay. so calendar integrity is when you know what you need to do, you put it on the calendar and you actually show up and you do it without arguing against yourself. Like you show up and you do it. Mm-hmm. And so when I started doing that, like I became that six figure CEO because that's what she would do. Mm-hmm. She wasn't messing around with like the next course and the next this. And and like, let me just keep planning or getting better at this. Like she was taking action. And so it, whatever she was putting on her calendar, she was showing up and doing it no matter how mm-hmm. she felt, no matter like, right. And that calendar integrity was like one of the big ones that helped me kind of make that next step. So you got to see where your gaps are in who you're being and be working on that as hard as you are working on the actual doing of stuff. Mm -hmm. I love that to be list. That is, that is huge because you're right. I mean, I look at my planner all the time. (laughs) I do have like the little, the little top, it says I am. So I always fill that every morning and maybe I should do that to be, you know? Yes, And then it's the same thing, right? So like we, we have women in our, our community where they just, they won't make the decisions. Mm-hmm. Like they, 
waffle back and forth too much. Like they're like, well, like they always think that they need to know more or do like before they can make that decision. And so we always say, just, I'm, I'm, I'm a decision maker. Right. I'm a decision maker. Like it's not as sexy as I'm abundant and I am wealthy and all that. But like, if you don't believe that affirmations are the worst thing in the world, if you don't believe it, if it mm-hmm. makes you feel worse, right. affirmations won't work. It's got to make you feel like, like you got to feel good about it. So are like, if someone's really stuck and they're not making decisions and they know that if they can become a decision maker, which you have to be, to be a multiple six, seven, you have to be a decision maker and you can't go back and forth and you can't take too long on the decisions, right? Like if that, if you're like, I'm a decision maker, I'm a decision maker. It's going to empower you in the moments of that day to make a decision rather than I'm abundant. Is that going to help you change something that day in the moments, right? So you got to know where your gaps are and who you're being and, and then coming up with that to be list. Now, just as an aside, one of the tools that if you're, if, if anyone's having like a hard time with that, because they're like, well, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what characteristics and qualities inside of me is holding me back. It's kind of like the idea of like limiting beliefs. Right. It's hard, Cause I remember hearing limiting beliefs all the time being like, okay, I get that conceptually, but how do I know what mine are? Right. 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 How do I know? Because if I knew them, I, they, I probably wouldn't be limited by them. Correct. Right? Those are just your beliefs. Like you don't right. know that like there's they maybe like anything else. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. They're like habitual in your DNA, right? Mm-hmm. So I have found that a tool like the Enneagram can be really powerful. Mm-hmm. Because it can help you. I don't like it as a, like, like we type ourselves, like that's all we are. And then we put ourselves in this box. No, it should be the thing that helps you get out of your box. Because mm-hmm. if you can see where you're like, like, oh, this is where I, this is where I habitually go in my thinking and in my feeling and whatever, that's not going to serve me to this goal. That mm-hmm. becomes how you know, okay, this is what's limiting me. These are the hurdles I need to be aware of. Like, you know, we we know that people that type as a nine and we attract a lot of nines in our community mm-hmm. because they are craving being decision makers. And so they come into my community because there's a, we, we were like decision, but they don't have that quality yet. Like decision making is really hard for nines. They go back and forth a lot or whatever. Mm-hmm. So th- once you know that, you can see the end of your own nose and you're like, oh, it's my lack of decision making as a pattern that has gotten me here. All right, I got I'm becoming a decision maker. Right. Because it's this pathway of like actually understanding your limiting beliefs and then taking action again, you know, towards it by changing who you're being, your identity, mm-hmm. right? Which is really cool. And I really believe that we can change our identity. I believe that a hundred percent. I can just look back at myself. Mm-hmm. Right, that's not changing your soul. Your soul is untypeable. Exactly. Your soul is that, like, but your personality, your identity, is just your past thinking that has mm-hmm. been put on autopilot mm-hmm. from different experiences, from how we were raised, from all the things that can you can rewire and change it. Yes, absolutely, totally. Especially if you're like what you were saying, um, well, both of us in our history, wherever you came from and the type of business you were doing and some of the decision making, you're not making decisions. You're being told what to do or follow this. Right. right? So it's like you never really had to do it. And it's not like you're not capable of making decisions. It's just that you hadn't had to do it before. So when it comes to down to it, you're like, well, wait a minute. Am I making the right one? Is this the right thing? What's going to go wrong? Well, what if it did go wrong? Then what? You know? Totally. Then what? So I, I remember when I um I was going to do something else and the people in my mastermind were like, you should run ads for people. You should you should open up an agency. And I would be like, no, I was like so petrified that I was going to be spending somebody else's money. Like I would be willing to lose my own, but not yours. Right. And totally. I was on and on. And my coach was like, so what would happen if you did mess up and I was like, well, I would lose their money and they would this. And like, I had this whole long list of everything that could go wrong. And she's like, okay, well, what if it did work? And I was like, I never really thought of it from that side. Right. So then I was like, oh, I can make them lots of money and then they can this and they can that. Right. And then she gave me the opportunity. She's like, well, what if you ran my own ads? I just about died. Cause I'm like, what? She's going to trust in me, you know? But it was almost like, Yes, I like you can make the decisions and it's okay that if something does go wrong, you're only going to learn from it, right? And there's always a way to recover. It's like, you know, no one's going to die. The world is not going to end, you know, all that kind of thing. And it's just taking a chance on yourself. And like you say, it's like choosing your dreams over choosing your fears every single moment. 
of the day. Cause that's really what it comes down to in that terrifying decision. You know, totally. I always say you have to manage your mind in the moments of the day. That's why I like this whole idea of like, you know, well, I work on my mindset in the mornings doing a morning routine. Okay. That's great. But you've got to make sure you understand how to manage your mind all day long in the moments of the day. That's how we're going to have success. Not what mm-hmm. you're doing. It's like managing your mind. Like it's that full-time job. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And even a couple of things have come up for me uh, recently, and I wanted to get your opinion on it or what advice you would have from it. So one big thing I, I find it not only for the people that I coach, but with, even within myself is your price, right? Um, you know, how much you're charging and then, you know, for every little thing. And then people are trying to negotiate with you. And, and I was always, when, especially when you first start, you're like, I'm just going to take whatever money I can get. So I'm, you know, And then I'm like, no, no, no. It's all about valuing my worth within myself and be okay with the possibility of losing that client, right? Um, Because again, that was another argument I had internally where it's like, well, I could get the client for this or I could just have no money coming in. So what is that decision going to be? And then it wasn't until I was like, no, 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 I'm going to stand fast in valuing my worth. And if I don't value my worth, no one else is going to. That's for sure. (laughs) So, and if I'm not valuing, how can I expect them to do it? Right. That did take, that's taken me a few years to get to this point. (laughs) If I'm being honest, because it is going through this thing. And as you're trying to grow and scale, I don't know what, what advice do you have or what's your take on that? I love this topic because I do feel like there are trends that get promoted in all the content consumption. So in right. all the podcasts and, you know, the guru says this and the guru says that and da, 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 da. And what's the trend? Is the trend high ticket right now? Is the trend low ticket? Is it the... Here's the thing. And listen, our worth is priceless. There is mm-hmm. never a dollar amount that will ever go on it, right? So here's, this is why it's so important when you're first, your niche. You do not need to know your niche when you're first starting, but you do need to know it when you're scaling. Mm-hmm. You have to, because if you don't know your niche, like you can't, you, you you can't go out there with the megaphone and reach your people. Right. But when you're just starting out and that's why I, I love working a lot of our women that we work with, they're just starting their coaching businesses. Right. I mean, they're like working to get their first clients and it's so fun because it's so easy. They don't think it's easy, but right. I think it's easy because literally to bring people into a consult and then close one-on-one clients. Like that's not hard. It really isn't. But when you start trying to put a message out there that is going to land on people that they're going to be like, wait, what? That's me. Oh. And then they want to work with you. Right. It's so different. And so Mm -hmm. it's also the core, like the, who you're, who you want to help and who you want to work with and then how you want to structure your business. That is first and foremost before price. Mm Mm-hmm. Price comes from that. And I am a huge, huge fan after having what I call escaping Alcatraz, which was leaving corporate, (laughs) which was really hard mindset wise to leave that. The door was open the whole time, but I did not realize it. Right. Right. I was hell bent on making sure that whatever business I created was going to be in alignment with my core values. And my core values are time freedom, time freedom over money, time freedom over money, like hands down. Um, and fun and joy in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I also knew I didn't want a big team because I just, I had a team of 250 people I was managing in my corporate career. I did not want to build that again. Right. Right. So for me, I believe that you've got to know, you've got to have intention, especially when you're starting to scale. What do you want? Do you love one-on-one work and it just fuels your fire Mm -hmm. and you love working with high-end clients? Awesome. Let's like have a luxury brand, you know, with very high paying, low number one-on-one clients. Great. Or like, I know for me, my mission and where I want to go is I want to help millions of women, right? And so Mm -hmm. that higher ticket, higher touch was not what I wanted in my business. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, we offered very like in VIP days and things like that, but not this long term thing, right? right? Like not this long term thing. So when it comes to price, right? Like it's and I'm I'm working to help women that are kind of in corporate. They're stuck. They don't know where they want to go next. They might want to start a business. It might be a career shift. They're kind of in this incub, like we call it an incubating state. Like it's trying mm-hmm. to figure it out. Like 
I, I didn't want to create a high ticket offer for those people, but I'd like to bring them into one when they're ready, right? When they're right. ready to do the next thing. So I just think you've got to start with who you're helping, what your niche is, how you want your weeks to look, how you want your Monday to Friday to look, what kind of work do you enjoy best or what sucks you dry? Like the one-on-one stuff, literally, like I, it literally drained my energy. Mm-hmm. But when I get to speak in a group and I'm with like a, like a, a whole bunch of women, like, let's go. Like that gives me so much energy, right? Mm-hmm. So I, for anyone listening, like you've got to, do it by design, build it by design. Then we figure out the pricing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and then you understand your pricing model, right? So that you know, like, well, do I bring them in at this price point, but then I'm bringing them up an ascension ladder with me with my offers? Like, because I also have the philosophy of I want lifers. Mm-hmm. So part of our strategy is, is that we're not transactional. Like when we come, when people come into our world, we want them to stay forever. So I also look at program design and offer design from that path. And then also pricing, because when someone comes in and they like work with us and it's like amazing and everything's great, I don't want them to leave. They don't need this anymore. Right. But how do I keep them? And what does that look like? And how do we have like a back end membership, if you will, right on the back end of it to keep mm-hmm. people forever? So I really think pricing is so fascinating because you there's so many directions you can go with it. Mm-hmm. It starts with who's the niche, what problem are you solving, and then how do you want to build your business? Right. I think that that's so critical. Yeah, definitely, definitely vital because I've I've seen it before where it's like you get into this. And then you're stuck because now you said, oh, I'm going to do this year long thing or I'm going to do a six month thing. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, it's like the longest six or 12 months that you've ever experienced. (laughs) Okay, let's talk about like no matter where you are, whether you're in corporate or you're you have your business and you're you know, you're making six multiple six figures. And it's like, oh, I know I'm meant for something more. Okay, but it's like you were just talking about like the different types of offers that you have. And it's like, I'm just still not feeling it, even if I am serving some people. So what is like the first step to go after that something more? So they're in corporate or they have a business and it's just not with it. So here's the funny thing. It's it's usually not a quick process. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a quick process, but if if it was going to be, we, we would already be doing the thing. Right. Right. So that's why I'd like to actually set that tone that like our first thing that we bring people into is like, it is, it's not a year long in a sense. If they have a, they can stay with us for a year. It may not take a year. It might take two weeks. It might take three weeks, but we call it an incubator because Mm -hmm. we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long it's going to take someone to kind of like really, but like if they do the work of like actually asking themselves a lot of deep questions and getting coaching, all that stuff, it can, and trusting their intuition and listening over time, like they are going to start to know. And here's the interesting thing is that first thing probably isn't the last. Mm-hmm. Probably not the last. It's probably the next step. And here's why, here's why this is this way. Like I think about myself back in corporate, that version of Julie could only think about what was possible in a certain box. It wasn't possible for me to think over here at that right. time. So you're only going to come up with ideas and thoughts and explore only what your current identity can think of is possible, mm-hmm. right? And the cool part is you test something out and then that reveals the next dot. Mm-hmm. And then you test something out and then that reveals the next. I find it to be very rare. Now, having worked with hundreds and hundreds of women, it has been very rare that someone goes from corporate or there, another, you know, there, another, you know, kind of career and knows exactly what it is and jumps right on in and then starts growing that one thing. Right. But people can get their head around that. I feel like it's so freeing to know that, okay, I don't have to know the end because if, when I was in corporate, there's no way I could have known I'd be running a seven figure coaching company. Right. Like that, that was that Julie, that was not even like in the, and I couldn't have gotten to that anyway, if I didn't start with the different dots that then connected, right? And that's a great Steve Jobs quote, right? You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back. And now looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, I could totally see why that would play the way out that it did. Mm -hmm. If I could only take the next step that fit in my uh, uh, belief possibility. Yeah. 
and that's it. And then you open up the next realm when you take that first step. So for some people, it could be that they just are still doing what they're doing, but now they've become their own consultant and helping people. And they start there or meet, right? There, it, it's hard to know until you start taking steps. Mm-hmm. You know what we get that's amazing? I want to say that like 90%, maybe 85% of the women that come to us, they are, they were in their day jobs and they couldn't see what was possible at all. So they went with that first thing that kind of came in front of them. Right. That, that hit that, that desire that they had. And you know what that is? That first thing every single time Hmm. network marketing. Yeah. It was for me. Yeah. Me too. Here's why. It's not rocket science. I've been studying this long enough now that I know why it, because it hit that cord. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to be doing what I'm doing. Could this be the thing? And it's the only thing usually getting presented to Correct. anybody. Mm-hmm. And then you get in, you're like, yeah, no, I don't think no, this is so what much. I want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to build this. This is that. I don't want to build another team. I, this isn't what I want to do. I don't. Right. But it's this like stepping stone of a dot. But the reason it is often for people is that their realm of possibility is still so small. Someone they know brings up this idea. Mm-hmm. It, it strikes a chord and that's why that is why that works but it's also why it doesn't a lot of people end up not staying in that but it becomes this gateway to the next thing it becomes a gateway to like oh podcasts and online this and learning right. this and learning that and then they come into it right so it's just fascinating how it, it's very rare that you go right on into the, the very first thing you've got to well, test drive. And I think to your point of what you what you said earlier to this is it's because that person or being introduced to that is the evidence of what's possible. Totally. So and and once I started getting into it, I really firmly believe that if someone can do something, anybody can, because it's totally. the evidence of possible. It's not like yeah. impossible because then no one would have ever done it. And yes. it all comes back to this is okay. How are they making it possible? Who do they need? Who did they become? And then what does that look like for me? Right. And that's the key. So that a big piece of advice I would give to anyone listening is when you see someone that has accomplished what you desire, stop asking them, what did they do? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to tell you the same, a lot of the same stuff, right? Get underneath who they're being. And I know that sounds weird. It's like, not like, so what did you do? Like, who are you being? But ask them better questions. Say, listen, I have a question for you. Like when you were building this and you were getting there, like, what are some of the, what's some of, some of the different thinking you needed to start thinking about? Did you find that your identity shifted? Well, how so? Like start to learn about their inner transformation of who they needed to become rather than just tell right. me what you did. Exactly. Exactly. Funny. So I was at this live event. There was like 5,000 people there. And I, well, I always follow the structure of the event. Like sometimes I go now, it's like we, like I get how to build funnels and stuff like that. So you can always learn something, but I follow really the structure of events, right? What, what kind of journey emotionally are they bringing the audience on? So as we're sitting here and all these big, like seven, eight figure earners are on the stage and they're all talking about who they needed to be to get there. And a lot of people would get up and walk away. Oh, I'm hearing the same thing again. They're not telling me what they did. I want to know. And I'm like, you guys are all missing the point. Do you do this? Do you think this? Are you being this every single day? Because that is the secret. So we were, we went to dinner and and everybody was like, blah, 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 complaining about it. And I was like, well, wait a minute. (laughs) Like they're giving you the secret. The secret sauce is who they're being how to overcome this, how to, you know, get out of your thought for this or whatever it was. And then, and it was just like, as I was sitting there listening to it, I'm like, yeah, that's it. It was like the light bulb went on. Like, this is what needs to happen. And, and it seems so easy. So we're like, oh, that can't be it because that's just too easy. Right. Uh, Which is why I think it's so important, you know, like for people to, to, to marry it together. Right. It's like, here's who I was being while I was doing this. Mm-hmm. If more entrepreneurs that you know have businesses where they do teach people like some of the how, whatever it may be, marry it with this. Like if you can do that, you will, because here's what happens. I, this is what I see happen all the time for people. Those that lead with the doing, mm-hmm. right, um, will teach someone how to do something. But what they will find with their audience is that only a fraction will get the results. 
Hmm. Right. Because Mm -hmm. they haven't changed who they're being. So those that get the results, they're already the kind of person that will do the action. Mm. See that? Right. Mm -hmm. So they'll already take it and go. That's why in uh, something like network marketing, you're only going to get a fraction of people. Why? Because their identity is in alignment with doing the work. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. the only difference. Right. So if people that are out there teaching Mm -hmm. how, if they could marry the who you need to be while you're doing this strategy, I'm teaching you that's where it's gold, right? Because it's, I think it's a hundred percent mindset. It's not, and who you're being, but if you, and then those that just lead with the, the mindset that often doesn't fill the gap that the per, the person is perceiving they have the person's perceiving that they don't know enough. They right. don't have the right strategy. So if you can combine the two, that's what we do. We really try to combine the two because you've got to give them what they think they need, right? But you're like wrapping it, like, well, they, what they want. I mean, like, right, give them what they want, but right. then wrapping it with what they need to hear and understand because I'm going to give you the, like, the, the tactics. But while you're doing this, this is how you need to be showing up. So like when we talk, when we're teaching people how to like do a consult or whatever, Like, I'm always like, it's not about following the step-by-step of what we teach you. I want you, this is, I want you to have this, how you're being when you're going into it. I want you to actually coach yourself on who you're being and how you're going to show up and what that energy is going into doing that consult. Here's how to do the consult, but here's who you need to be as you're going into it. Here's Mm -hmm. how you need to manage your mind going into doing that step-by-step process. Mm -hmm. That I think is so important. I don't think it's that part's taught enough. And I love that you said that you marry the two because I don't think it's ever been explained to me that way. And if you really picture that and how it's working together and interlocked, that is, that is the secret sauce. That's like it. literally. You know, what, you know what's so funny? We talked about the Enneagram a little bit. Yeah. It's fascinating that the, so many of the entrepreneurs that I do know that actually were very successful in network marketing before they went on to build their next thing or whatever, Mm -hmm. they're all like Enneagram threes and Enneagram eights. Mm -hmm. Like, so what does that mean? It means that their current identity, Mm -hmm. their current personality with the way that they've, you know, all the things that they think on, 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 on loop worked for them. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. You see that like that their their current identity, it worked for them to say, oh, I need to do this. All right. Got it. And they execute because right. their being could go and do the do. Mm-hmm. But the same thing gets shared. Right. And it's the same thing. You look, I, I always watch like different group programs or whatever. Some people are having success and then others are not. Mm-hmm. And it's the same stuff being taught. So yeah. what is that gap? It is that being that it's it is everything. But if 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 entrepreneurs could get better at marrying the two together, mm-hmm. that, which is, that that is what is going to change the trajectory of the results that their clients are getting. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we did in our business is I actually, um, when I was first starting, I was definitely in the do with people because mm-hmm. I, I'm an Enneagram four, I wing three though in all my things. So I'm like, oh, is that what I need to go do? Okay, got it. And I just go do it. Mm-hmm. I don't sit there and I'm like, I don't know. I, I just it, go right? do. So I don't need all that extra. So I just was assuming I'm just going to teach everyone this. And then everyone, and the same thing. I, I had a handful of the clients that boom, took right off. And then the rest that were struggling. I'm like, huh, what, how can I help these people? What do I need to do? That's when then I started to, I got certified as a life coach. And I also got certified by Bob Proctor on the mind because I knew it's not just the doing, I've got to help these people and who they're being. Mm-hmm. So when you bring those things together, okay, now we're going somewhere because right. if I can know the limiting thing that's holding that person back. And now not only do I know that, but they know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now when Watch I teach out. them how to do a consult or whatever, they're going to do it mm-hmm. because we manage the hurdle that they would normally throw up about doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. And also too, I think one of the things that, um, like that I had learned is especially coming from, you know, working with other people, it's like, no matter, or even just in life, really, or or on our beliefs is that something only has meaning, but the meaning that you give it, like nothing has meaning, but the meaning that you give it. Because a lot of times, and I just did on Tuesday, I did this workshop, and everybody like three people said the same thing. It's like, I'm not making this money. So that makes me like less than 
so they're tying their personal value or worth to how much money they're making, right? Or their knowledge to how much money they're making. And that's not necessarily the case. But if you get stuck in that, because you're still trying to work, you know, through whatever your offer is and all this other kind of stuff, you know what I mean? That's not going to get you very far. So yes. it's like, let's just drop giving everything a meaning and just, right? Right. Yes. And I think too, like it is, everything's neutral. So if you think about whatever, however, however much money that person did make, let's say they've mm -hmm. made 10,000 in their business and they're, they're, it's their thoughts about that 10,000 yep. that are causing their problems. The 10,000 is neutral. Correct. It's the deciding that's not enough. It's deciding I should be further along than that, than, than I am right now. And all it's just the thoughts. It's not the 10,000. And so right. when you can start to see that, it's like, so eye-opening. Like I was coaching someone today where she was just like so upset about her job. Her job is like becoming crazier and crazier. And she just wants to leave and like do her business and all this stuff. And she really had this story of how her job was preventing her from being able to go and work on her business. And I said, oh no, your job's neutral. <laughs> it's your thoughts about your job yep. that's causing this problem. Mm -hmm. like, what? And like uh, people almost want to fight with you about it, but it's actually the truth. Mm -hmm. And then you're working with people to help them see it's just their story about the money. It's just their story about where their business is at. It's just their story about the job or the boss or whatever that's causing the drama and that they have total, like total agency over that is so empowering. Oh my gosh. This is so, so good. Is there anything last that you want to leave us with? I just, I guess just one last thing, cause like, let's go back to like marrying some tactical. Yes. Right? Yes. Let's and do I it, know let's that who your people are. Yeah. Like I just, I just want to like remind people that when you spend the time and the money and the focus on bringing leads into your business, on the traffic and all of that, just remember that most often people need to be nurtured. And so you know, meeting people where they are so that you can like, this is like, this is like a, like a, almost like a new epiphany for me. When people are coming in from a lead, from whatever lead magnet, lead gen, whatever that is, when they're coming in, you're going to have a percentage of those people that are actually ready to buy right then and there. Actually let them tell them how they can actually work with you right now. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is, is that we end up, well, I got to bring them into nurture. And I got to give, 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 and I got to do all these things. And then I'll make the offer. You're going to miss the people that are ready to buy right now. For sure. Yeah, that's okay. Make it clear. Be very, very clear. But from there, so then you'll get some people that are ready to go right now. From there though, the rest of the people need to then be nurtured. Make mm -hmm. sure you have a container. I don't know that emails the only place anymore to be honest. And so figure out your container to continue to nurture these important leads. You probably spent money on these leads or you spent time. You're either mm -hmm. going to spend time or you're going to spend money on your leads, right? Right. What is your nurture strategy? So have your lead gen strategy, but really know what your nurture strategy is so that you can make sure that you, they, you're top of mind, you're helping them get to that next step and know what that process is. So have a process, but also think differently about a container right? So for example, is there, you know, do you want to have a text message community that you're kind of reach them? Because email is great and that should be part of your nurture strategy, but what else can you do? Mm -hmm. How else can you nurture people? Maybe you're bringing them into your podcast world. Maybe you are, you've created your own community. Like we've created our own community and our own app so that we can, as the leads come in, we can keep nurturing them over time mm -hmm. rather than hoping that the lead comes in and makes a decision in a seven email sequence. Right. Right. And then if they don't make a decision in a seven email sequence, like, oh, okay, we'll just throw them into our bigger email list and we'll right. kind of be like, there's got to be more to that. People are craving engagement and connection. And how can you create that for your leads so that you're in it for the long term? Mm -hmm. Because I think that we, we expect, and I, I used to think this, that your marketing is very linear. Mm -hmm. it's like they come in as the lead and then, you know, we're giving them a few options to buy across an email sequence. And then if they don't, right? No, like it's not linear and it, you, and really getting in and, and, and finding that platform that works for you to make sure that you are actually actively engaging with those leads over time so mm -hmm. that they actually create almost like a community, if you will, with those leads so that when they are ready to make that next step with you, like hands down, they want to work with you. I love that. Thank you for sharing that because that is, 
And that is crucial. And it's like one of those things where it's like, and you hear this all the time, no one's on Facebook anymore. Everyone's on Instagram. Oh no, there's a, 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 and it's like, okay, you figure out what works for you and where your people are, right? I love that. So, yes, so good. And get so them good. off those platforms into your world. Yes. That I think is huge, which text messaging, you can do that so easily. You can do that in different, you know, I, we, we, we use many networks and we have our own app and community, like own your people because Instagram and Facebook, like they're great for nurture if they see the thing, mm-hmm. but there's a good chance they're not going to see the exactly. thing. Exactly. Right? And so, and it's also your platform for lead gen. So it gets confusing and all those things, but if, if you have a platform or an approach for specifically nurturing people that have already said yes to you in some capacity, mm-hmm. like gold, absolutely. Yeah. Gold. I love that. Okay. It's time for Michelle's hot minute. I'm going to ask you a few rapid fire questions. So just answer the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. I'm going to set this for one minute. Okay. What has taken you the longest to get good or decent at? Oh, connecting with others that are growing businesses at my level. I go so inside with my community and with my clients and with whatever. I know that I need to become better at actually connecting with other seven figure business owners and learning mm. from each other. I'm that is not, I've not been great at that. I love that. What is your guilty pleasure? Oh, my guilty pleasure content consumption. I (laughs) love to learn so much. And I literally have earbuds in my ears almost all the time, like consuming content. I love learning. Oh my gosh. That's funny. What actress would you want to put, would want you, you would want to play you in a movie? Oh, Drew Barrymore, a hundred percent. Oh, I love her. What is the best book or your, your favorite recommended book for all entrepreneurs? Oh God, there's so many that I absolutely love, but I'm going to be super cliche and say Think and Grow Rich because it's actually the formula. Mm -hmm. If you can get past some of like, it can be a little dry in the beginning, but if you can look at the chapter headings and what they are, that is the formula Mm -hmm. to actually having success, hands down. Hmm. What is your favorite way to distress, de-stress? Walking. In nature. Oh. Out. I walk every single day. What's your next travel destination? Ooh, it's actually Italy. That's where <gasps> we're, yeah. Where are you going in Italy? Well, we ha- we're we mapping it out. So we decided okay. as a family that oh, we were going to do like a tour. We weren't going to do our typical um, uh, beach vacation in the summer this year that we want to actually go somewhere else. And so Italy is on the list. Okay. I love that. And what tells you most about a person? Oh, their energy, their attitude. Hmm. I love it. That was fun. Thank you for playing. (laughs) I appreciate you, Julie, so much for coming on the show today. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this was so good. Can you tell everybody where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. I love being able to actually connect with people. So I would love if something came up for you today that you were interested in, whatever, just message me on Instagram. Like I love actually having conversations. So I could send you to a lead magnet that goes to my email mm-hmm. or we could actually have a conversation. And I would love to actually have you DM me on Instagram. And I think that that's where all the goodness can happen with the conversation. I love it. Love it. All right. Well, there you have it. Becoming her with Julia Ciardi. I'm sorry. I keep calling you Julia. It's Julie because my daughter's name is Julia. And it was funny because we were talking the other day and she's like, mom, everybody calls me Julie. So now I just return like flipped it. I'm sorry. Julie Ciardi. Definitely go check her out. I will drop where you can find her in the show notes. Thank you once again, Julie, for coming on. (laughs) Thank you so much, Michelle, for having me. All right. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, let's grow your business together. Thank you.